What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now in this video I build this wooden jack plane using the Veritas wooden plane hardware kit. Now I've already built a block plane so if you want to go back and watch that it will show you how you actually build a plane. In this video I'm going to try and keep it to what you need to know to install this actual kit so I won't get super in depth into how to build the plane itself. I've already done that in a previous video so I'll leave a link up here or link down below. Go check that out first if you have not done so already and uh, yeah without further ado let's build a jack plane. Let's do it. Right, let's jump into this project. I'll start by showing the, the kit itself. So what you get with it is the instructions. They're very, very simple, very, very clear, easy to read and very, very easy to follow. It's a nice, simple little woodworking project. You don't need too many tools for it and uh, it's not extremely difficult or anything like that. Everything is in Imperial, it's not in metric. That's just one thing to bear in mind. If you're used to working in metric, you'll just have to uh, you know, just get used to converting everything to Imperial. It's not really a big deal. So that's the instruction book, nice and simple, nice and clear. Again, you don't have to make this plane. The only thing you have to keep the same is the dimensions and the angles for your bed, the thickness of the plane, that kind of thing. But the shape of the plane, that's up to you. The timbers you want to use, that's up to you as well. So that is the instruction manual. Now here are the parts themselves. Again, it's very, very basic. It's a Norris style adjuster. So this is how you adjust your blade up and down and then to adjust it square inside in the plane itself. That's a magnet and it just sits into this guy. So you fix this, it's a very strong magnet, you fix this into the bed of the plane, that sits in there and then that holds that in place, it makes it nice and stiff just for adjusting. And like I say, keeping your plane blade square in the, in the plane itself. Very, very simple. That's the brass bar that goes between the lever cap and the blade. So your lever cap, I've already started working on this, that'll sit over your lever cap. You get this grub screwed in, or the grub that sits in there. There's your screw that goes between that, and that will screw through onto your blade and create tension between the blade, the lever cap, and this blast bar. And that's what holds everything in place. So that will be forcing the lever cap up into this and onto the blade, keeping everything, in, like I say, nice and sturdy. So that is basically the kit and you've a choice of two blades i went with the pmv 11 blade or you can there's also the 01 blade you can buy with the kit as well i got this from axminster in the uk i'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out i just opted for the pmv 11 steel it's a little bit more expensive i think it's about five or six euros or more expensive, might even be a little bit more than that, but it's a better quality steel, it's a harder steel. Now, harder steel is harder to sharpen, that's the only downside of a harder quality steel, but uh, once you get a good edge on it, it retains that edge for a bit longer. So that's the only reason I went for that. Right, that is the kit itself. Like I say, it's very, very basic. Now, like I say, I'm not gonna get super in depth into how to build this plane, I've already done that. Um, like I say, links will be below or I'll roll it in above. This is just gonna be pertaining to this actual kit. So I've done most of the work now. I have all my blanks and everything ready to go. I've also my lever cap um, almost ready to go as well. So it's gonna be a case of just throw this thing together and show you how it's done. Right guys, just to give you an idea of the plane that I'm gonna try and build, it's gonna look something like this. Mine is gonna be more of a jack plane length. So it's roughly 14 inches. I've just roughly sketched it out here. Just put the curves that I wanna see in it. So I'm gonna have like a handle. It's almost like a shark fin on the back of it. That's gonna be where my hand fits in. So it's gonna be um, rounded in this way and then rounded in the sides as well. Hopefully, you now if this all works out, that's what it should look like. So that's a 45 degree bed for our blade. Our blade will sit bevel down in there. Our lever cap will go on top of that. So it's a walnut lever cap. It's uh, the main body of the blade plane. It's going to be maple. It'll have walnut sides. So it'll be something like that. I will have to glue some more maple on top to make my handle. Now, I've already done a block plane, so most of the details of how to build a plane will be in that video. Like I said, I'm gonna try and keep this video specific to this Veritas kit. But just to quickly go through it again, here is the main body of your plane. You will need the main body and then you will need two sides. So your first thing to do is to dimension every all the timber up to what it says in the book there. Then you need a 45 degree cut for your bed. 
and I want to cut this then this is going to be the relief for your shavings to head up inside so I've roughly just drawn in a curve there that's the kind of curve I want I want so again it's nice and simple a 45 degree cut and then we need to remove this section here and this will be all this material here will be gone so I'm going to take this to the miter saw now and cut this out and I'll curve this piece on my spindle sander so I'm going to get on and do that okay we are back from the miter saw and I cut this curve on the bandsaw and just finished it off on the spindle sander. So uh, you've seen me do all that before in the last video. So this is where this video differs because we have to fit our Norris style adjuster into our bed now before we glue on our side. So I wanna have all this work done. So we need access to the face of our bed, which we cut at 45 degrees. Now, let's see if we can get the camera to focus on this. There we go, so there's the instructions of what we need to do. So if you can see, we need two and a half inches and three and three eighths. They're the center of our two holes and it's a seven eighths hole. And there's the depths we have to go. So if you wanna pause the camera, you can just see what I'm going doing there. So we need to put this recess in. This hole will be slightly deeper to allow for this mechanism here. So that's gonna sit in like that if that makes sense so that's the next thing we have to do i have it already marked out Let's see camera is focusing on that it is so we have that already marked out here so that's going to sit roughly about there so now i need to drill um two holes two seven eighths holes one of them is three eighths deep and the other one is five eighths deep. So the top one is five eighths deep and that one is three eighths deep and then we have to cut that channel out as well. So let's get on and do that. Okay, I have the piece in the voice there and I just leveled the 45 degree face. So let's put it in my voice, put a level on it, make sure it's level. Now I need to ensure that I'm drilling perpendicular to my work. Again, I don't have a pillar drill in the shop yet. If you have a pillar drill, this would be ideal for this kind of work. So I have to freehand this, which is never ideal, but you know, needs must. I've also got my uh, calipers set to five, in five eighths of an inch. So the depth stop on my calipers is there, five eighths of an inch, so I can check as I'm going. So yeah, it's just a case of freehand this now. Try and line up the drill. Try and keep as square onto this as I can and just take your time. Should be good. Okay, on to the next hole. This one needs to be three eighths deep. So again, I've just readjusted my verniers to three eighths so I can check my depth. It's almost the full depth of the bit itself. So let's get that lined up. Try and keep as square as we can. Perfect. They were pretty good all around. So I kept that fairly square, which is good. Okay, now we need to chase out this hole now. Let's do that. All right, guys, there's our two holes drilled. Now I've just squared some lines around this. We have to remove the rest of this with the chisel. I did get some drift in the top hole. It drifted slightly to the right. Was, as I'm looking at it, slightly this way. And um, believe me, a pillar drill is the highest tool on my priority list at the minute. The ability to drill a straight hole perpendicular and keep it center to your work uh, is invaluable. And to do this freehand, it's a little bit harder. But yeah, it's recoverable, so it's not too big a disaster. So now I'm just gonna take the chisel and just square this out.
Right guys, this is what we're left with. So we've cut out our channel now. We've drilled our two holes. I've managed to recenter this so you can see the little gap that I'm left with on the side of my cup or my receiver for my Norris style adjuster. But this is screwed in place as well. So um, it's not gonna be an issue. It can't move from where it is. And once I put that screw in, it's gonna be solid. So there's our magnet. That sits in. Just like that. And that's, that's our adjustment inside in there. And then the next thing we wanna make sure is that our blade is perfectly flat on our block. So nothing is protruding, everything is in the recess and our blade is nice and supported by our 45 degree uh, bed. So that's that part, a little bit tricky if you don't have a pillar drill, um, just take your time, be very, very careful. As you can see, the drill drifted on my hand the human hand is not very accurate when it comes to things like that. Machines are way better. So um, yeah, now we can look at gluing our plane up so we can set up the front part and the back part of our plane, get our sides on and we can glue that in place. So that's what we'll do next. Right, we're gonna glue our two sides together. So we, this is the main body of our plane now going together before we do any shaping. So all we have to do now is make sure that we leave our mouth wide enough. So I've just checked it with the plane blade extended and I need about six millimeters. So roughly about there. I'll check it again when I'm gonna glue it up. So make sure that you leave your mouth wide enough. And if you're gonna flatten the sole of your plane after you have it all glued up, which you probably should do, take it to um, like a granite slab to lap it on, leave that mouth a little bit smaller, so maybe a couple of mil smaller, just as you could, because as you remove material from the bottom of your plane or the sole of your plane, you will widen that mouth slightly. So I might even take it back to five mil just to allow myself that little bit to play with as I flatten the plane. Right, let's get this glued up. <laughs> Okay, so we're back from gluing up the plane and I've squared this all the way around now. So all my sides are perfectly square and perfectly flat all the way around. Very important. Now, from here, you guys can shape the plane any way you see fit, do your own design. You don't even have to make it necessarily this way. As so long as you have a 45 degree bed, it's nice and flat, your mechanism can fit in. You can make it with a tote back here. You can put like a saw handle on the back of it. You can make a round front on it. So all you need basically is a 45 degree bed, a mount, and somewhere to clear the chippings. That's it. After that then, the shape is up to you. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do actually, I might replicate my block plane now. I was gonna put a handle up here, but I don't think I will. I'm gonna round the front, so I have somewhere to put my hand. I'm gonna round off the back, because this is actually quite nice to use, the small block plane to hold in your hand and use it. So I think we'll do that. I might shorten this a small bit. And uh, yeah, now just to show you the mechanism. So. That slots in there and it will be screwed in. There's our Norris style adjuster that sits in there. As you can see then, there's the plane blade sitting on it. So that's how we adjust to keep our plane blade square and also up and down to raise and lower that blade according as we need it. Then we have our lever cap. I still have to um, shape this. That will sit down there with our bar drilled through and that will press between the bar and the blade, keeping everything nice and stable. Right, so next job next. I need to resize this plane and um, start to shape it. I need to finish the lever cap. So I need to epoxy in this brass insert into the lever cap and just round off these corners just to shape it a bit nicer. So. 
let me go do that and uh, I'll get back to you. Right guys, so before I start shaping this plane then, what I've done was I've marked out for my brass rod to go through both sides. Now, it's kind of hard to see the pencil line on this, hopefully you can see it there, but what I've done, I've squared up from the mouth of my plane to here, and then I've done a 45 back here, which shows me the line of my bed. Then I took my lever cap and my blade, I've lined them up on that bed, exactly on the 45 degree line, that gives me the thickness that I need to be out for my hole, drew a line. So now I have two parallel 45 degree lines. I square the line up here. That's where I want my brass hole to be. So I'm 25 mil down from my top. So hopefully you can see that there. There you go. So there's my two lines. That's the thickness of my lever cap and my plane blade. There's my bed. There's where I want my hole to be. So I square that line straight up and around and back down this side so I know that my two holes are exactly in line. So that's just a little tip before you start shaping and put any curves in this, while it's nice and square and everything is true, get those holes marked. Now, if you have, like I say, a pillar drill, you can mark one side and just drill straight down through it. Not a big issue, but I'm gonna to have to drill from both sides, so I need to do that. Now, um, I did drill straight through my block plane with my handheld drill before, and it's slightly crooked, so I'm gonna, drill in from both sides this time. So there's a little tip. I'm gonna do that now and then we can start shaping this plane. So there is the basic shape of my plane. It actually feels quite good in hand up front here. You can get a nice bit of pressure down and it's lovely and comfortable. Now all I have to do is just round the back of it again, um, the same as I don't my block plane. I won't bore you too much with this. Again, shape the plane until it feels good in your hand. And once it feels good in your hand, it is good. So this is gonna just be a case of me using my Japanese saw rasp again for the millionth time if you've watched my videos. So I'm just going to roughly shape this now, round everything off and sand it down. I won't bore you too much with it, but um, as you've heard me say a million times before, this is a fantastic tool for removing material quickly and for shaping and carbon wood. Okay, all the sanding and shaping is now done. So the plane is fully shaped. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It feels really nice to hold it here and here so you can use it in this kind of a motion. Feels really good in hand, which is the most important thing. So um, it's just a case of get a finish on this now and then it's final assembly and uh, by linseed oil, as always, I'm just gonna lash this on. It's always nice to see the oil go on. Right, just before final assembly, I'm just gonna lap this plane blade quickly. The Veritas plane blade comes lapped, or it comes shaped out of the box with a secondary bevel. It is not razor sharp. Unlike the Lion Nielsen plane, it came razor sharp out of the box. This one is just prepared, but needs to be lapped. So we're just gonna work that secondary bevel. 
it shouldn't take too much to get this razor sharp. Razor, razor sharp, lovely jubbly. Okay, on to final assembly. Let's do it. And hopefully we have ourselves a nice working plane at the end of this. Okay, next in is our brass rod. Nice and simple. Just like that. Happy days. Drop in our mechanism. Lovely. Sure our plane blade is sitting nice and flat and it is. our cap it's a nice tight fit which is good to see mm, the epoxy hasn't set yet so I'm just going to leave that a little bit longer before I tighten that down Okay, the five minute epoxy that I used is not holding in the brass insert. As you tighten the screw down, it's just pulling that brass insert out. So what I've done is I've turned the brass insert around and put it in from this side so it can't pull through. That way you can drive the screw against the, the plane blade and it cannot pull the brass insert through the walnut um, lever cap. So I'm going to have to find a stronger epoxy to hold that in or just use it this way around for now. It doesn't look too bad. It's not as neat because the, I suppose the bevel of the insert is not to the front side. It's now to the back, but it doesn't stop the functionality of the plane. It's, uh, it's holding the plane blade tightly in place now. So um, yeah, like I say, five minute epoxy is not going to do the job. It's just pulling that insert straight out. There's, there's an, quite a bit of force when you drive in that screw to pull that out. So um, yeah. I'm going to have to find something else for that. So let's try this plane out now and see how it works. Right, let's give this a try. We'll start with a nice little bit of sapili here. Let's see how this thing gets on. So let's make sure we're looking nice and straight there. We are. Lovely. There we go, really nice shavings. I didn't expect anything less, to be honest. Um, Flower task plane blades are pretty good. And that PMV11 stuff is really good. Really, you can turn any plane into a fantastic plane by putting a real high quality blade in it. There we go, some nice sapili shavings. Let's see if we can get them a little bit finer than that. Wind it back just a touch. There we go, pretty nice. Okay, let's try a bit of hard maple and see how we get on. Some nice full length shavings there. problem at all with the maple and we have a small bit of walnut waste here let's try that oh, 
Lovely. Cuts like butter. I'm pretty happy with that. Right guys, there we go. So concludes this jack plane build using this Veritas wooden plane hardware kit. Pretty impressed with it. It's nice and easy to use. It's really well made. If you go with the PMV11 blade, it's a fantastic blade seal. It is razor, razor sharp once you hone it right and it will hold a really nice edge. You saw the cutting of it there, the proof is in the pudding. The only thing is that brass insert, the epoxy resin that I use, the five minute epoxy resin is not strong enough to hold that brass insert insert into the lever cap. So I had to flip it around as I showed you. So I'll have to come up with um, a different epoxy resin. If you guys know anything that's a better alternative to that stuff, leave a um, comment below, let me know. And uh, yeah, that's it. Hopefully this inspires you to go make your own hand tools, guys, because it is really, really enjoyable using your own hand tools on projects. I have quite a collection building up now from all this scrap wood that I've had. So that's it. If this has been informative, hit the like button. If you're new here, think about hitting the subscribe button and I shall see you in the next build. Take it easy, guys.